Hi, this is Dr. Ayya Pandayan and in today's uh, uh, video, I'll be discussing on a condition called as rotator cuff tear or a, it's basically a muscle tear in the shoulder and a particular surgery which we do of like it's a, a recent advance um, or a new surgery uh, which helps in patient with big or massive rotator cuff tears and the surgery is called as the superior capsular reconstruction. So this is a it's a pretty new surgery, maybe maybe last seven to eight years back, and this surgery was um, uh, you know, it was strategized or invented by Dr. Mafata you know, from Japan, and uh, it's been used worldwide now for a condition called as massive rotator cuff tear. So before we go into the details, I'll discuss what is a rotator cuff and what is the relevant anatomy of the shoulder and when we come to the shoulder and shoulder as I mentioned in the earlier videos it's basically a ball socket joint so we have a bone here called as a humerus bone which is the bone of the arm and so the humerus bone here it goes up and forms a ball called as the head of the humerus this head of the humerus or the ball sits inside a socket we can't see the socket here because it's covered by the muscles here. So this is the ball and this is the socket. So when we try to lift our hand up and down, this movement or the, it, what happens inside is there is a rotation of the ball inside the socket like this. So this, for this rotation to happen, we need mechanical forces. So biomechanical forces in the human body comes from the muscles. So there are a particular group of muscles called as the rotator cuff which is a group of four muscles one called subscapularis in the front which helps in this kind of rotation and something called the supraspinatus which helps in rotating or lifting like this and the infraspinatus and the teres minor which are the rotators outside in this particular position so now in uh, some patients um, because of a fall they can have traumatic muscle tears so now this is the ball socket and we can see this muscle here which is in blue and this is the rotator cuff and part of the rotator cuff called the supraspinatus. So I'll just show again in this. So we have the ball socket joint here and we have the muscles which arise from the shoulder blade or the scapula, the scapula, the shoulder blade here and this muscles, these muscles come like this and get attached like this on top of the ball in an area called as the footprint. So the same muscles here and the most important muscle which helps in lifting the shoulder is called as the supraspinatus, which is a part of the rotator cuff. So this is the picture of the supraspinatus. We can see it is coming in attached here. And the attachment area is called as the greater tuberosity of the humerus bone of this ball in this area. And this attachment area where exactly it attaches on the greater tuberosity is called as the footprint. Normally, the attachment surface or the area of attachment on the, of the footprint is around 16 millimeters. In some patients, either because of a fall, uh, we can have something called as traumatic or because of the fall, traumatic or injury related muscle tear. So if I fall like this and because of the external forces which act, the muscles can just rip off from the shoulder and we can result in a uh, tear here called as a supraspinatus tear or a rotator cuff tear. Normally, if a patient comes to me with a rotator cuff tear and if it is very recent, then I can do a keyhole surgery or an arthroscopy. Arthro means joint and scopy means the camera. So I can do an arthroscopic surgery where I put a small camera inside the shoulder. So basically we'll be having a three or four small keyholes in the shoulder. Through one, to one we pass the camera. So we can see, so I pass the camera here. I can find out where exactly the tear is and I can switch it up like this. So what I do is, okay, when the muscle is in this position, I go catch it, bring it back to its position and switch it. So this is called as a rotator cuff repair. So um, that we can do in recent tears. We have also another category of patients called as, uh, who have this kind of tears called as degenerative tears because of old age and because of the rubbing of the bone parts against each other again we can have a similar tear 
In degenerative tear patients also, we can do the same kind of repair called as a primary rotator cuff repair, which is quite straightforward procedure. It involves like around 40 minutes to one hour surgery and uh, one day of hospital stay and patient completely recover in around two months time. So they, 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 and they usually have the full power in around three months time. So now, um, in certain categories of patients, for example, if the patient is coming to me after a pretty long time, he sustained an injury or have a degenerative tear and he comes to me after one year. If it's one year, what happens is this particular, this particular muscle over a period of time goes back, goes back from its attachment and this, this procedure, this process of going back from its attachment is called as retraction. So we have something called as retraction. Retraction is over a period of time and if it's a neglected tear, the muscle goes back from its position. So it's attached like this, it's over a period of time, it shrinks in size and shrinks in the length and gets retracted. So in retracted tears, it is very difficult for me to go and catch the muscle here, come back and fix it in this particular position. It's very difficult because the muscle is already shrunken in size and it's become less elastic and becomes quite stiff. So these kind of tears, which is neglected and with a lot of retraction, is co are called as uh, massive rotator cuff tears. Massive rotator cuff tears, which are neglected. So in these kind of tears, where I can't do a primary repair, where I can't stitch it like this, bring it back to position and fix it like this, then I have to do a procedure called as superior capsular reconstruction. So here what we do is, along with the muscle, we have a tissue called as a capsule, which I have marked in red here. All of us have a tissue called as a capsule. Capsule is extremely thick and it's also responsible for having, in helping us having the shoulder movements. So I do a reconstruction of the capsule. The capsule is gone in this case. There's no more capsule there. The muscle is also cut and retracted and we don't have a capsule as well. So now, what I do is, I take a muscle from the thigh called as a fascia lata. Fascia lata is a side or side thigh muscle and I take a patch of it. I cut into a, I measure how much the defect is, then accordingly I measure how much, uh, how much distance I require from this particular point to here. And I take this patch and stitch it with suture anchors. I have discussed about suture anchors earlier in other videos. So with suture anchors are devices which help in suturing a tissue or a tendon to the muscle. So I, with suture anchors, I fix it at the greater tuberosity where normally the cuff is attached here as well as here. So I have the remaining cuff, which I have marked in blue, the remaining cuff, this cuff I attach by side to side. I attach the, re the remaining part, I don't try to pull it. If I pull it, it doesn't come. And moreover, if I pull it, it causes retest. So what I do is, I pull this and attach it to the side of the capsule, the new capsule, that the capsule which I made from fascia lata. So this is called as this technique of fix, taking a muscle from the thigh, a patch of muscle called as fascia lata from the thigh, and fixing it into its original position in the capsule, where the, actually the capsule is supposed to be, is called as the superior capsular reconstruction. So the success of this surgery depends upon a few criteria. It, it's not like all patients will be successful. It's not like all patients will have the success rate, success rate with superior capsular reconstruction. So there's a few so, so certain things which we actually see and certain things in the surgery which we have to be extremely careful of and we have to do to make it successful. So now um, an important thing in patient assessment, that means which category of patients would have a better success rate. So in my personal experience, a patient who have a definitely a good muscle strength. So he is much more, little more younger, maybe not like a patient who has 70 years, patients are born in the 50s and early 60s, who have an inherent muscle strength which is good and a deltoid muscle strength which is good, they respond much better, they have excellent results. And in patients who have a pre-operative, that is before surgery, they have an extremely good muscle power, and at least they have some range in the shoulder, they have better results. 
The second is, I look at the MRI of such patients. So when I look at the MRI of such patients, then we have a criteria called as Hamada's classification, uh, which actually tells us what is the amount of arthritis in the shoulder. So what happens is, patients with these kind of tests also end up in arthritis in the future. So if they are in the category called as Hamada, Hamada 1 to 3, so, so, so Hamada 1 to 3, then they have better results. That means they don't have significant arthritis. Uh, stage 4 Hamada is much more, it's 4 or 5, it's much more dangerous. No, not rather than dangerous, it is more, they have more arthritis and uh, worse results. So less arthritis, so better results. Next is the fatty infiltration. What is fatty infiltration? In the MRI, what I uh, look is, I find out what is the amount of fat in these muscles. So why does a muscle have fat? So um, any muscle, usually the, the muscle cells are much better and, and all, you don't have much of fat or no fat at all. If a muscle doesn't function or if the muscle is cut and it is in disuse, doesn't, it's, it's in, it's not being used at all and if it shrinks in size, in size. Okay, so we have a condition called as fatty infiltration of the muscle, which is actually seen in the MRI. If the fatty infiltration is lesser, they've got better results. So we also have to do SER, so sugary capital reconstruction, in patients who have higher gordelier or fatty infiltration grades. But the lesser fatty infiltration, that means the muscle is more supple. The muscle is much more better. So that is to sum up about the superior capsula reconstruction. To say that this is a surgery which is done in a condition called as massive irreparable, that is can't be normally repaired, irreparable rotator cuff tears. So here what we do is take a muscle from the thigh, a patch of muscle called as the fascia lata and we replace it in the gap of, a, of the normal capsule of the shoulder attach the older, that is the existing retracted shoulder muscle, that is the rotator cuff muscle, to the, to the new capsule. And this is called as the superior capsular reconstruction.